Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. I really hope you're doing well. As you can see from my surroundings, I am, I'm back. I am back in the UK, I'm back with my books. It's very bittersweet, I'm glad to be <laughs> surrounded by my books again, but I can't say I'm back, glad to be uh, back in England, but like, it's fine, <laughs> it's fine. So today I have a part one of my biggest haul video I think I've ever done. Uh, the reason I'm splitting into two parts is part one is gonna be all the books that I ordered while I was away to be delivered to home. And then part two is going to be all the books I bought while well in America. Um, I figured I'd do it in two parts, mostly because you guys have probably seen the majority of the books I bought in America, but just like split between different videos and TikTok and everything else. So I thought it'd be good to do a haul and just have them all in one video for you guys if you've missed any of the other ones or if you want to just see them all, all in one go. But I'm honestly mostly excited right now to unbox the ones that I ordered to home because obviously I haven't seen those ones yet. And I can't actually remember all the books that I bought, but the pile is literally like cover my address it, it's it's like half of me while I'm sat down so there's there's quite a lot of books here and um I'm just kind of gonna go ahead and start unboxing so I know one of these boxes does have an alarm clock in it it's not books it's an alarm clock but I'm not sure which one that is so we're just gonna get started aren't you proud of me I haven't rambled for a change okay what do we have here oh okay so Olivia Blake I forgot <laughs> ordered this oh my god I forgot I ordered most of these things okay so this is La Petite Mort by Olivia Blake this one is a very very short one so this one is uh come and see what the new moon brings you in the secret world of undead New Orleans after the death of her estranged grandmother Marissa Marrero I hope I pronounced that right finds herself bequeathed or bequeathed bequeathed yeah a surprising inheritance, a house in the New Orleans French Quarter, left to Marissa with a variety of bizarre conditions attached. Among the surprising consequences of Marissa's acceptance is a friendship with a man called Jackson Germain, an uh, alleged alchemist who may or may not be hiding a questionable history, and a series of encounters with Elizabeth Clavier, a notorious vampire rumoured to hunt mortals for sport. When Jack and Elizabeth's turf war escalates, an ominous prophecy threatens to upend the tenuous detente between sides, leaving the city and its occupants vulnerable to an unknown force. Ultimately, Marissa must decide where she stands amidst the battleground of a supernatural New Orleans and between Elizabeth and Jack themselves in order to save what remains of her life. That sounds amazing but honestly I'm just obsessed with this cover like how good is that and this as with a lot of Olivier's self-published works does have illustrations in it for example this one that is just beautiful. I am very excited to read this I can't believe I forgot that I bought this I'm so happy. So I've been trying to kind of buy up her back catalogue because obviously she's getting everything published at the moment traditionally and I really love these self-published editions and I'm really sad still that I missed out on Alone With You In The Ether. I had it in my basket on Amazon for so long and I kept thinking like, oh, I'll buy it next time I get paid and then I got distracted by other things and didn't buy it and then she got published and I was like, oh, I mean, I'm happy for you, but yeah. Anyway. Some of these also, I think, have um, journaling stickers in as well. I mean, I don't know if you guys are interested in that. I guess I'll show you. Okay, so I got some of the tabs as well. So this is a pack of, like, loads of different coloured ones, I think, um, because I'm really enjoying, yeah, having, like, aesthetic tabs. So we've got, like, pastel -y purples and blues. We've got, like, corals and stuff. And then more blues and some pinks. So love that for me. <laughs> Oh, I bought You Reached Sam. So this one I've heard a lot about on TikTok recently and it sounded like sad and I think I've said to you guys a lot recently on this channel, I'm in the mood to cry at the moment. That hasn't changed by the way. I think I'm just like in, not like in my feelings as in like in my feelings, but I'm just like, I just, I just want to feel things, you know? Um, so this is 17 year old Julie Clark has her future all planned out. She'll move out of her small town with her boyfriend Sam, attend college in the city, spend a summer in Japan. But then Sam dies and everything changes. Heartbroken and desperate to hear him one more time, Julie Julie calls Sam's phone just to listen to his voicemail recording and Sam picks up the phone. The connection is temporary but hearing Sam's voice makes Julie fall for him all over again and with each call it becomes harder to let him go. What would you do if you had a second chance at goodbye? So this I think is YA so I definitely think I'll read this very quickly but I just wanted something that's kind of cute and a little bit sad and a little bit you know just gonna make me in my feelings so yes. I love, this feels like Christmas, honestly, it makes me so happy. This one is Hex by Jen Fan. So this one I heard uh, a frolic through fiction talking about and she said that it was just amazing. Um, and I'm really into witchy things at the moment for several reasons. One of which I think I mentioned um, on a recent vlog that you will have seen. 
I've got a project coming up at some point in the next like 12 months or so that is kind of based around like witches and especially witchcraft in America um but I can't really talk about it properly yet so um yeah I, I bought a non-fiction uh, about the history of witches uh, while I was out in the states which I think I showed in that video and then I'm just kind of wanting to read a lot of witchy fiction as well for the same reason just to you know um broaden my mind and my knowledge on the subject and kind of expose myself to different points of view whether they be fictional or non-fiction um so yeah this is it's only a little book um this one apparently is really really good so it is the 4th of december 1591 on this the last night of her life in a prison cell several floors below edinburgh's high street convicted witch gellis duncan receives a mysterious visitor iris who says she comes from a future where women are still persecuted for who they are and what they believe as the hours pass and dawn approaches gellis recounts the circumstances of her arrest brutal torture confession and trial while iris offers support solace and the tantalizing prospect of escape Hex is a visceral description of what happens when a society is consumed by fear and superstition, exploring how the terrible force of a king's violent crusade against ordinary women can still be felt right up to the present day. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. Very, this, incredibly excited for this. Okay, we have some more like pretty journaling stickers. And then we have, um, I really wanted this one as well. This is a non-fic. This is attached. Are you anxious, avoidant or secure? How the science of adult attachment can help you find and keep love. I've been wanting to read this for ages. I didn't realise this. I thought this was, I don't know. I feel like maybe this is a pirated copy because I saw this in the States and the quality felt a lot different. I need to do a bit of research on this because I'm not 100% sure this is what it's supposed to be so before I delve into reading it I just want to check it but yes this is all about attachment styles are you um an anxious avoidant or secure attachment style um and how you can kind of use that knowledge to I guess help you with love which I need so yes okay this one's caused a lot of controversy recently and my copy was a little bit battered thanks Amazon um Light Lark by Alex Astor I was kind of curious about it before all the book talk and book Twitter controversy recently over Alex herself um, and now I'm just curious to read it because I've heard people saying it's not what it was marketed as so yeah I'm very curious just to see you know what the writing's like and whether it is what it was um, supposed to be I guess so yeah I'm very curious. This is Welcome to the Centennial. Every hundred years, the island of Lightlark appears for only 100 days to host a deadly game where the rulers of six realms fight to break their curses and win unparalleled power. Each ruler has something to hide. Each curse is uniquely wicked. To break them and save themselves and their realms, one ruler will die. To survive, Isla Crown must lie, cheat and betray, even as love complicates everything. So I think a lot of the controversy around this surrounds Alex herself. Um, she kind of portrayed herself as somebody who had a very difficult time trying to get published and then eventually, you know, fell lucky with Lightlark and has had this like incredible um, opportunity. I can't remember who picked up Amulet, so I don't know who picked that up in America. Um, yeah, it doesn't say, but um, yeah, so she obviously, she's been published. She's had this incredible like six figure publishing deal offered to her and her films also, her book, sorry, has also been optioned as a film, I think by Universal. So like, obviously that's huge. And you know, for somebody who's apparently struggled for 10 years to get published, this is amazing. Only it's then come to light that actually she didn't kind of have the same struggle as most people have with trying to get a book published because she comes from an intensely privileged family and a lot of money behind her. And I believe she was just kind of like given money to live while she spent time writing her book, which obviously is very different to a lot of debut authors authors who will be working and writing along alongside that and yeah um I can't speak on the subject I don't know Alex personally I don't know her background and to be honest I'm not sure that I really care like good on her for publishing a book it's incredible that it's been as successful as it has been um and you know well done to her for getting the film option like I don't know I, I don't really see why everyone's like super pressed about like her journey into publishing <laughs> I don't know but anyway I think a lot of the problems people now have with the book, however, are that the way it was marketed are very different to, is very different to like how the book actually is. And a lot of like the quotes and tropes and stuff apparently aren't, don't appear in the, in the final copy. But again, that's based off of the arc versus the final copy. So again, like, you know, we all know an arc is not a final version of a book. Um, so yeah, basically I'm just very curious about this anyway. And um, that's, I've rambled. I'm just kind of annoyed that it's kind of come 
like that if you can see like it should be you know upright and instead the way it's been packaged it's anyway whatever i don't think this one's a book i think this one might be my alarm clock but let's see because i could also be wrong yay it is my alarm clock honestly guys i have made some very adult purchases and i'm very excited by them one of them was a toothbrush on prime day so excited about my new toothbrush charging it as we speak can't bloody wait to use it and i also have a lumi alarm clock to try and help me with my intense hatred of uh getting up in the morning when it's dark so anyway okay on to more books god i don't remember ordering this <laughs> black sheep someone mentioned this on i think it was uh bookstagram and i ordered it and i i totally forgot i'd ordered it yeah i can't remember what it was about this that made me so desperate to oh hang on yeah it was it was the first line of the book okay i'm i'm <laughs> i don't always fuck a man before i kill him but when i do i find there's one thing they all have in common they're disappointing a masterpiece <laughs> an actual masterpiece okay black sheep that was why i ordered that book i remember now <laughs> incredible incredible okay what does this beautiful little package have to hold oh god i failed at that <gasps> yes magnolia parks mm. so everyone's kind of said this is basically like gossip girl set in london and a lot of the kind of us book influencers have been talking about this at the moment and everyone had said that they didn't have a clue what the synopsis was before they went into it because they couldn't find a synopsis anywhere i found one on amazon but i actually i started i read like the first couple of words and then thought no i want to go into this completely blind so yeah that's the front cover apparently this all makes sense once you've read the book and then this is the back cover which definitely gives more gossip girl um I'm very excited to read this. I am putting myself technically on a book buying ban um, because of this and all the books I bought in the States. Like I, I have a genuine problem that I, I've run out of space to keep my books. My TBR pile is so high, it reaches my TV from the floor. Um, and I don't have anywhere else to store my unread books or my read books at this stage because my bookcase is also full. Uh, however, I will bend that rule for the rest of the Magnolia Park series. And I also have like six books on pre-order that I've had pre-ordered since the start of the year. So it's fine. God, there's going to be more in here. Okay, I'm one of these is one of my most anticipated books though. Um, which actually two of my most anticipated books. Whew. Whew -whew. Okay, so first of all, we have The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. Uh, I think this is his newest thriller. Uh, recently widowed actress Casey Fletcher has escaped her family's lake house for peace and quiet. She's been happily losing herself in her thoughts and several bottles of bourbon until the glamorous couple across the lake catch her attention. They look so perfect, just like Casey and her husband used to be. But is anyone what they seem? Is Casey as perfect as she thinks? She has a detective sat at her kitchen table. She has a man bound and gagged upstairs. Oh my gosh. She's about to uncover a dark truth so life-changing that nothing will be the ever th nothing will ever be the same again oh my gosh okay okay oh, i'm excited for this i don't like this cover as much as the us edition but we won't talk about that then i have the wolf of oranyaro i'm back in my like fantasy mood again at the minute this is the chronicles of the bitch queen which is basically the main reason why i bought this because i was kind of fascinated by the name of the series um so I think this was a debut novel by K.S. Filoso, and it says, uh, Born under the crumbling towers of her kingdom, Queen Talion was the shining jewel and legacy of the bloody War of the Wolves. It nearly tore her nation apart, but her estranged marriage to the son of a rival clan heralds peace. However, he suddenly disappears before their reign can begin, and the kingdom is fractured beyond repair. Years later, he sends a mysterious invitation to meet. Talion journeys across the sea in hopes of reconciling their past. An assassination attempt quickly dashes those dreams. Stranded in a land she doesn't know, with no idea whom she can trust, Talion will have to embrace her namesake. The wolf of Oranyaro is not tamed. Love that. Excited for that. This book, 
I am so excited for this one. So I'm actual actually mutuals with the author on Twitter. We talk quite often, uh, Clay Hartman. This is his debut. This is Flames of Mira. I am oh, I'm so excited for this. Oh, look at that map. Okay, are you kidding me? <gasps> oh, this is beautiful. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Oh, I've been wanting to read this for ages. Okay. Magic and redemption in a world of fire and ice. Among boiling volcanoes and Demira's frozen lands, people like Ig are forced to undergo life-threatening trials that bind chemical elements to the human body. One of Mira's most powerful elementals, Ig, serves as an enforcer for Magnate Sorello Adrian, but is cursed with flesh-binding magic that will kill him at the first sign of disobedience. When Sorello is overthrown, Ig quickly learns he can do far worse than what has been asked of him so far. If he can't escape the flesh-binding in time, he will have to kill a friend and kill friend and foe alike to stop his his master reclaiming the throne or sacrifice himself trying oh. i'm excited like look at that cover guys oh i can't i can't wait to read that cannot wait okay last box now last box okay i have more more tabs ah yes okay god this was a huge box for two books are you kidding me we have Garnet Flats by Daphne Parries. This is the newest book in the Eden series, which we all know I've been loving. This is her small town romance uh, series set in Quincy, Montana. We have uh, Indigo Ridge, which is Enemies to Lovers. We've got uh, Juniper Hill, which is Grumpy Sunshine. This, I think, is Second Chance Romance. Love it. And then finally, we have Does It Hurt by H.D. Carlton. Ah, oh, this cover is gorgeous. So this is H.D. Carlton's newest release. This is, it says, who am I? I've forgotten the answer. I've forgotten the answer to that question long ago. Ever since I ran from that house so desperate to escape, I left with only the clothes on my back and the socks on my feet. After that day, I've only ever walked in stolen shoes. Could I be a girl who is searching for the meaning of life and faceless men? They were all so forgettable until he came along. He took me under a waterfall and made me forget my name, and in return, I took his instead. Enzo Vitali, an enigmatic man that will only ever love the deep sea, or rather the predators that inhabit it. Turns out he's not so different than the monsters he feeds. He lured me onto his boat like a fish in the ocean, seeking vengeance for my crime. Had I realized his intentions and that a massive storm would leave us shipwrecked, I would have run. Now I'm a girl who's seeking refuge in a decrepit lighthouse with a man who loathes me almost almost as much as he craves me. He wants to hurt me, but the old caretaker of the abandoned island may have intentions far more sinister. It's no longer a question of who I am, but rather, will I survive? Ooh. Uh, I'm legitimately obsessed with this cover though. Like, oh, are you kidding me? So that was a book haul. That was a lot of fun. It felt like Christmas. Very excited right now to delve in. If I could choose which book I'm most excited to read by out of out of all of these, honestly, it probably would be a toss up between Flames of Mirror because I'm just so excited to support a friend and amazing. Uh, Magnolia Parks because everybody that I know right now is going on and on about how incredible that book is. And then I would also say, surprisingly, Hex. Um, so yeah, wow, I, I am so excited to get stuck into these. Uh, if you read any of these and you loved them, let me know in the comments below. Obviously, let's keep the com the comments spoiler free for everybody as well. Um, I'm gonna do some digging on Attached to make sure that this is the right publisher. Bluebird Books for Life, I don't know, it feels, it just feels a little bit cheaply made and I thought that this was like a proper, like really like, you know, major publishing house, um, book so I need, I need to just double check that but I'm excited to delve into this as well because I think this will be useful so yeah wow 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 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12, 13 books it's my lucky number love that for me anyway yes if <laughs> I forgot how to film these videos if you like this video please do give me a thumbs up let me know in the comments below don't forget to subscribe if you are new let me know if you've read any of these books I love you guys I'm happy to be back yay <laughs>